we are going to take a look at gravitational potential energy uh, since we've already done kinetic energy and we will then look at how to solve problems when you're using conservation of energy when you've got things switching between potential and kinetic and all sorts of other types of energy. When we are talking about gravitational potential energy in its simplest form we are talking about it near Earth. Whereas if you have an object that's up 5 meters, 10 meters, or 20 meters, the gravitational, the strength of the gravitational field is not going to be changing. Uh, whereas when you get up to where satellites are, that all gets a little more complicated. But for right now, when you're near the Earth's surface, we can say that gravitational potential energy is this. Take a minute and write this down, pause it. The equation for this which the IB day book I think likes to call it E sub P for potential. It's going to be uh, M G H, where the M is mass, G is acceleration due to gravity, and H is going to be the height. Uh, I often like to call this GPE, stand for gravitational potential energy. You can call it whatever you like. Now let's try and solve a problem using this. Uh, let's say that this is the problem here. Take a minute, pause it, draw a picture, see if you can solve. Now, if you drew a picture, which I hope you did, then you probably realize that the main number that matters is that that watermelon is six meters above where that guy is. And so when we go to solve our problem, the mass of the watermelon was... 5 kgs. We've got acceleration of gravity, due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared, and we've got our height of 6 meters. And that's going to give us a 300 joules. And we're going to call it positive. So that positive implies that it has the ability to do work. And so as you have that watermelon way up there, and it falls downwards, then it's going to have a lot of kinetic energy by the time you try to catch it. In fact, if you caught a watermelon drop from six meters, that would probably be quite, quite catastrophic to the watermelon and to uh, your body. I think one reassuring thing about energy is that it can never be completely destroyed. Or you can't just create it out of nothingness. It's just going to get changed uh, from one thing to another. And that's what we're saying here, uh, that if we have some heat, we can turn it into motion. We have motion. We can turn it into heat. And it might turn into a form that maybe we can't use very well. But it's never going to just disappear. Now, what we're going to have you do is list many different forms and try and see how you, you can figure out how they go from one form to another. So let me give you a list of some different types. Uh, so take a minute, pause it, write these down, or maybe you have them written down already. Now, if these are all the different types of energy that we are dealing with, take a minute and see if you can figure out how a car engine changes one of these types into another. And the same thing with a windmill and also with food in your body. For our car engine, we need to know that most cars are gasoline powered. And gasoline is a fuel, fossil fuel, and that's going to have chemical potential energy. Then you burn it, and that's going to turn into heat. And that heat is going to cause the expansion of gases in the pistons. Those are then going to turn uh, the axles eventually, and so we are then going to end up with kinetic energy. For a windmill, you're going to have the moving wind, which has kinetic energy, which is going to spin turbines within a generator, and that's going to turn it into electrical potential energy, and you get voltages. For the food in your body that has chemical bonds that are going to be broken and rearranged, so that is chemical potential energy. That can go a couple ways. You can use that chemical potential to move your lungs back and forth, maybe to make you run around a track or run around in a basketball game. That can give you kinetic energy. Let's say you're just sitting in a cold place. Uh, you have to stay warm. So this could also be turned into heat 
with thermal energy. While we're studying mechanics, most of the conservation of energy problems that you're going to see are going to involve gravitational potential and kinetic energy, and maybe also some work and friction involved as well. So as an example, try this problem, pause it, draw a picture, see what you can do to find the speed before impact. Now I'm sorry, the picture is not more dynamic. I have kind of disappointed myself in that, but at least it is factual to what's, what's happening in the problem. Now with a conservation of energy, if energy is conserved, you can always start with initial equaling final. Initial being when he's up in the tree, final being just before impact, as far as the coconut is concerned. Now initially, you should have two terms because you've got uh, gravitational potential energy initially going on because it's up in the tree, and you also have kinetic energy because he throws it. Just before it hits the ground, we're going to call this the height of zero. So he has zero gravitational potential energy, and he has only kinetic energy final. Sorry, the coconut has kinetic energy final. Now we fill in what we know, mgh plus one-half mv initial squared equals our one-half mv final squared. Now what's nice about this compared to equations of motion is that we don't have to be concerned with positive signs and negative signs and acceleration due to gravity. Uh, directions like with the positive and negative don't matter with uh, kinetic energy because it's a scalar value. Gravitational potential energy can be positive or negative, but for us, if we call it down to the ground zero, it can be positive. Now what's nice, if you look, the term that cancels out is mass. So we didn't even need to know the four kilograms of the coconut. Now you plug in your values and solve. And then you fill in the numbers, and there you have it. You end up with 15 meters per second. Now keep in mind, it wouldn't have mattered if he had thrown it up, down, sideways, because with kinetic energy, uh, you do not need to worry about direction, which is why when you have problems like this uh, with a projectile going up or down, if you can use conservation of energy as opposed to the equations of motion, then always do that, because then you don't have to worry about directions or the plus and minus signs as much.